In this video, I want to provide an introduction to the Bernoulli and binomial distributions. So what we're going to start off by doing is defining what each of these distributions is. Or actually, we're going to start off with defining the Bernoulli, and then we're going to introduce the binomial a bit later on. We're also going to talk about why we might want to use each of these distributions. And we're finally going to finish off by talking a little bit about the conjugate prior to each of these distributions, which in both cases happens to be a beta distribution. OK, so let's first start off by defining what is actually meant by a Bernoulli distribution. So typically the example which is given when you're talking about a Bernoulli distribution is imagine that you're flipping a coin. So one side of the coin has a value of heads and the other side has a tail. If the coin comes up heads, I'm going to define the value which our random variable, the flip of the coin, takes on is equal to 1. And if it comes up as a tails, we're going to define the value of our random variable equal to 0. So then what we can do is we can start off by thinking, well, what would be the probability that we get a head? So the probability that x is equal to 1, well, I'm going to just set that parameter equal to theta. And then we know simply because the coin is never going to come up on its side in this sort of theoretical example that the probability that x is equal to 0 is in which case equal to 1 minus theta, which is the probability of getting ahead. So then what we'd like to do is we'd like to try and combine both of these probabilities into a single function. And so what we're going to do is we're going to derive the probability that x is equal to k, where k can either equal 1 or it can equal 0. And we're going to say that this is equal to theta to the power k times 1 minus theta to the power 1 minus k. And the idea is that this probability distribution here for a single throw should be able to reproduce each of these individual cases. And let's just double check that that's the case. If we have k is equal to 0, then we have that this thing up above is equal to theta to the power 0 times 1 minus theta to the power 1 minus 0, which is just 1. So this is the probability that x is equal to 0. And theta to the power 0 is just 1, so this just becomes 1 minus theta. So we've reproduced above the case when x is equal to 0. In other words, we get a tail. And similarly, you can see that if we were to set um, k equal to 1, then this would then become 1. This would then become 0, because you'd have 1 minus 1, which is 0. And hence, the right-hand side would then become theta for the case when x is equal to 1. So in both cases, it reproduces the probability. Hence, this is our probability distribution here for this particular case. When we've got a binary indicator variable and we're just considering one particular flip, then we have what is known as the Bernoulli distribution, which is this distribution here. Then what we can do is we can start to think, well, what would happen if we flip the coin, let's say, three times. So imagine we flip the coin three times and we wanted to work out the probability that the first flip was equal to one, the second flip was equal to one as well. In other words, I got a head on both of these two flips. And then for the third one, I got a tail. How would I work out that probability? Well, we're going to assume that they are a random sample and hence they're independent. And I think that's a fairly safe bet for the case of flipping a coin. In which case, what we do is we take the individual probabilities and we multiply them together. So for the two cases of getting two heads in a row, we just get theta times theta. And then for the last case, when we're considering a tail, we just get 1 minus theta. Hence, the probability of this particular sequence is theta squared times 1 minus theta. So you see that we can use the Bernoulli distribution, which is really just for a single flip, to help us to derive these sort of aggregate probabilities whereby we're talking about a sequence of throws. A slightly different question is to say, what would be the probability that if I throw the coin uh, three times, so if, let's say from i equals 1 to n, and I sum together the values which my random variable x takes on, what would be the probability that this sum is equal to 2? And actually, I'm going to change this n up here to a 3, because I'm just going to sort of keep it in the same sort of dimensionality as the above example. Well, how would we go about working this out? Well, we know that there are basically three different ways this can occur. There's the probability that x1 is equal to 1, x2 is equal to 1, and x3 is equal to 0, which is just the above example. And then we've also got the case where, if I sort of use the notation a bit more shorthand, uh, 
imagine that the first case is 1, the second case is 0, and the last case is 1, so 1, 0, 1, so they still sum to 2 there, and also the probability that we get a tail for the first throw and then two heads following. So we have to add together all three of these cases, and in each case it's just this probability which we've worked out there, so we get overall 3 theta squared times 1 minus theta as the probability of this event occurring. In general, if we are trying to work out the probability that the sum of individual Bernoulli distributions, or sort of n sums, of xi is equal to a value k, then it turns out that you can work this out, and there is a particular formalism for this, and it's basically called ncr, and what you do is you put your sort of value of n and your value k into this particular formula, and then you multiply it through by theta to the power k times 1 minus theta to the power n minus k. And the second part of this formula is quite intuitive. Essentially, we're just saying that heads comes up te uh, k times here, and tails occupies the other cases here. The notation nk is a shorthand for n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. And basically what this is saying is that there are this many ways in which, or these, this many combinations, which result in k heads from an overall number of rows of n. And it's very easy to actually sort of talk about how we can arrive at this formula, but that's not really the purpose of this video. It's more just to introduce these distributions. Okay, so now we finally derived both the Bernoulli and the binomial distributions. We then need to ask, why would we actually use these distributions? Well, one of the reasons we'd use these distributions is if we're talking about, obviously, discrete data, whereby we have a sort of success or failure type thing. So the, the dependent variable here is a binary indicator. So you can imagine this being an example of, well, an example of using this might be talking about the disease status of an individual. Do they actually have the disease? Are they positive for that disease or are they negative? So you can imagine both using a Bernoulli and potentially a binomial distribution to describe that sort of situation. Finally, I wanna just quickly talk about the conjugate prior to these type of likelihoods, and it's known as a beta distribution, which we'll talk about in the next video. But the idea with a beta distribution is that it has exactly the same sort of form as both the binomial and the Bernoulli case, and so its sort of form is theta to the power, as it turns out, a minus one times one minus theta to the power b minus one. And note that this has the same sort of functional form as the binomial case, I've got theta to the power something times 1 minus theta to the power something else, and also the Bernoulli case. So that when I multiply this prior through by the likelihood, which is the numerator of our Bayesian formula, we're actually going to get out a posterior density which is of the same form as the prior, and hence the fact that the beta distribution is conjugate to the binomial and the Bernoulli distributions.